Now, all right, what we got here out of uh, the spring 2012 issue number 46 of Scroll Saw Woodworking and Crafts, they have the Wacky Beaver Birdhouse. Okay, sorry for the shadows on the thing, but uh, they got a pattern here. And it calls for a little bigger board than what I got. I got a one by eight by eight cedar board at Menards. And that board is $18 and 16 cents, or at least it was on uh, last week when I bought it. And I also bought a one by six by eight cedar board, and that was $13 and 24 cents. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make one beaver birdhouse using this board and I'm going to shrink the pattern even further and make another one using the one by six. So I should have two different size birdhouses and we'll see which one I like. I'm thinking it's not going to take anywhere near this full board, but uh... I'll update on that after I, I get the pieces kind of drawn on here and cut out and we'll go from there. is one foot. I got two feet. All right. Now we will sand these down and then we'll be back.
what we got here, I took the face and I'm going to end up gluing this on there. So, in order to make it easy, because no one will uh, see this part. So I'm going to drill a hole through there. Okay. Then I'm going to ram a deck screw. Get it started good. And then I turn it so the point is out. And then I line this bad boy up. And I make sure I like where it's at. And then I push on it hard enough. Hard enough to make a dent. She's threading in. Okay, and then I'll take that out. And now I got my little hole in there. So now I'm gonna take this out to the garage and I'm gonna sand off the little line I I, I traced on there. And then I'll come back and I'll put some glue on this and we'll glue it on. Alright, we're gonna do the same thing. They give us they had us cut a piece out like this. This is gonna sit on the roof. And it makes it so it has ears. I will uh, even these two pieces out after they're stuck together. But seeing the way it's designed, what I'm going to do just to make it easier to stick it together is I'm going to do the putting a screw in each one, each side here to kind of hold it tight all right all right now we go in from the back here screws started and I'll probably go through till just a point is sticking out and I can line it up here to where it looks about as even as I'm gonna get it here I think I got a little too much point sticking out here. Making it a little hard to line it up. Um, it's pretty good on the top. The sides ain't the best. But uh, we can adjust that up here with the sander. Looks about even, doesn't it? All right. We'll, uh, I don't think I, I like it up a little more. Maybe this side down a little more. Yeah, just just like that. So I'm gonna start my Alright. So I like that and I'm sure it would be sturdy. But what we're gonna do put a little glue on there.
My dog's getting mad. I don't know what my dog is barking at. <laughs> find their holes here this one got covered in some glue and a little glue on the front gonna get that all right is that where we had them Jesus. I'm sure there's an easier way to do this. Oh, there we go. Dropped right in. Just like downtown. Now I'll go even these sides up so it looks like it's one piece. All right, I took my uh, two roof panels, put a bead of glue on the one, put two finishing nails in to hold them together. Now I'm gonna take the face of the beaver and I'm gonna put some glue on him hold that and I'm gonna jam them on there oh I put way too much glue on there and then my thought was I was gonna stick a finishing nail in there to hold that guy together Is, roof is complete now I brought this piece out and we're just gonna put some glue on and attach this Get that lined up. And these nails will be covered by the hands and the feet of the beaver. Now, we're going to put the roof on. So basically, we want this end flush with the front of this. So, I'll uh, put a little glue on. 
I'm going to put some hard part is going to be getting it so it stays flush in front here we'll ram one in okay now we'll go to the other side We'll get one in there. All right. Now we'll do the back. In the back, I actually uh, want a little bit of an overhang. So the back isn't going to be exactly flush. All right, so what we're gonna do, last thing for today, is I'm gonna glue, uh, glue his hands on and his feet so it has time to dry here. Again, I want to make sure I'm covering up them uh, the nails. And I think it's all uh, personal interpretation here. I don't think a person can do it wrong. I kind of like that angle. Alright. Now the feet. I think the feet Probably look better sitting off at a little bit of an angle, huh? Yeah. on that one so I think I'll actually move the foot over a little bit just so the majority of that isn't sticking out Touch that up a little bit. So we want to get this foot on there. the other guy up now
bit. That ain't so bad. Got a little excess glue here. I'll probably be fighting with it with sandpaper tomorrow. That ain't so bad. All right, this is what we got. And tomorrow we'll add the nose, the eyes, the floor, and some crosshatch on his tail. Uh, this hole, I don't know if I mentioned it before, this is a one and a quarter inch hole. That's what the plan called for, so that's what we got. All right. All right. Now, I cut uh, some eyes and some eyebrows out and painted. The, the nose I cut out and some teeth. Now, this is out of, uh, I cut a chunk of that cedar board off and I Planed it on the planer down to 3 eighths just because I didn't have anything else that would have been anywhere near thin enough to uh, to do that. So that's what I did. I planed a piece of that board down to 3 eighths. And I'll save that board for the next project. And like if you look on the plans, it shows you to cut each tooth out individually. Well, I've made these in the past and I've done that and this time I figured I'd try something different so I cut both teeth out in one and also the eyeballs it shows you to do the eye uh, each individually and then the eyebrows well I uh, cut it all as one piece kind of roughed up where the eyebrows are with the Dremel tool and I drilled smaller holes than the, what I'm in the end going to use for the eyeballs. That way I have some wiggle room once I get it on there. So now that we have these done, what we're going to do is I'm going to put them on there. And a little fine tune in here. And then I'm going to glue them on there. And after them get glued on, I'll come back for the next step. All right. Now all the, the glue is dried. I'm holding this stuff on. And now I'm going to put some eyes in. What you do is you drill a quarter inch hole. And I bought these eyes off of Amazon. You get... I believe it was 50 eyes for like 10 bucks and then uh, what you do like I said before I drilled a quarter inch hole they got that little tab on there and you just push them in so there now he has uh, brown eyes um, the last thing we got to do here is we got to make the floor and then uh, it's gonna paint the cross hatch on here so I'll go uh, get the floor made up and then I'll show you how I put that on all right I cut the the floor for this guy and uh, basically just made a square I like to put rounded corners in there uh, that way uh, water and stuff like that can drain out. I attached it by putting a screw in each side there. And then I put one in for a handle and it closes. It opens and closes kind of hard but uh, makes it easier to clean it out. And then what I do is I cut a 45 on one side. The side that's going to be that you're going to have close up and then the, a 45 on the side that'll be against the back that way when it opens it, it can pivot 
And then I, when I'm screwing this in, I pull up on the piece as I'm screwing it in. And that seems to make it for, so it closes and it, it takes a fair amount of pressure to pop that bad boy open. Alright, so that, uh, that is the beaver we made. But I also have one, boy, and I had made him a, a while ago. And if you notice, I uh, made this guy full size. Okay, so 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 this one. Uh, if you notice, the hands are the hands are bigger. I traced everything the actual size that was on that pattern. And this is where I mentioned how the teeth. He's a little little dusty. He's been sitting in the room waiting to go out. Um. The teeth I cut separate, the eyes and the eyebrows I did separate, where on this one I did one piece. And I also, on this guy, I got a little glue I clean up. This guy was sitting upstairs, I was waiting to take him up, up north to put him out on a fence post. Um, so he's got uh, arms and feet. And I painted a crosshatch on the tail. So, and I, for a hanger on the back, what I did is I uh, put a spacer and then I bought one of these hangers where there's two pieces, they both look identical like this, and then you just slide it over the other one and there, it, it hangs up. And on this one, I have no hook for opening the bottom but I did put an additional screw in and that holds and keeps this bottom from pivoting so it has the same screws in each side but it won't won't move unless you take that other screw out so again this is uh, one pretty much made full size off the pattern and this is the one I've been building in this video and I shrunk some stuff down and I mean it's it's all in fun and then I actually got a bird, beaver birdhouse here that I made boy this guy's probably been hanging in the tree for four years I would bet so he's definitely a, a little worse for wear here but I just wanted to show what they look like after they've been sitting outside for a while and the spiders found them. Um, on this one, I actually used Craig jig screws to hold the head to the roof. And this guy has the arms and the legs again. But this is just cedar. And that's basically what it looks like. I mean, it doesn't really get much sunlight where this guy's at. He's hanging in a tree. And they use it. I mean, I got to clean it out and that's why on this one that we just made these gaps I'm not really too worried about them because they really fill these things up I mean the birds that are using this they pack grass and sticks and everything else up in there so I actually try and leave more opening on the sides so the stuff can drain out water can drain out if water gets in there and stuff like that because they are kind of kind of messy. I'll stand on this chair here, see if I can give you a better view. But uh, yeah, that's uh, the beaver birdhouse. Again, super. It's a super simple project. Fun, kind of fun to look at when you're watching the birds come out of there. And again, I got this out of a magazine, a scroll saw woodworking magazine. Spring of 2012 issue. Well, 2012. So this guy has been hanging in that tree since 2012. So it's a little longer than I thought. Because I remember I built him uh, right after I got the pattern. So if you're wondering what it's going to look like in, in a couple years. And I got uh, some birdhouses that I've hung out where they get more sun. And then instead of getting... 
looking like this and they they turn more of a gray you know they just the cedar grays out bleaches out but there that is uh a beaver birdhouse all right till the next project